King Herod was one of the greatest historical figures of all time. This preeminent king of Judea, fueled by madness and paranoia, became one of the most successful architects of the ancient world. Nearly 2,000 years after his death, King Herod is once again on the world stage with the unearthing of his personal tomb. From the pages of history comes a larger-than-life story, the story of King Herod the Great, whose tomb has finally been found. But why has it taken over 2,000 years? The great Jewish historian, Josephus Flavius, left us detailed accounts of Herod's funeral procession. According to Josephus, he was put on a golden bier, like a bed, that was studded with fine jewels and it was carried by his son, organized by his, his, his son Archelaus and his other sons around the bier, carrying him from Jericho to Jerusalem, Jerusalem through Bethlehem to Herodian over an eight-day walk in which finally he was placed in the tomb there. And it's there at the Herodian that uh, there's been a search by many people to try to find this wonderful tomb. This is where he chose to be buried. So why, with all this information, has the tomb never been found? Josephus Flavius describes that Herod was buried at uh, Herodium. The problem is that it is much larger than just a monument which is on the mountain itself. Professor Ehud Netzer from the Hebrew University in Jerusalem has dedicated 35 years of his life in search the of the tomb. The preserved part is this one. Uh, to the left, uh, and the highest point is, is in between. The two Ehud Netzer, he was an architect. He was a young architect, but was very interested in ancient structures as well. And Egel Yadin had him figure out the water systems and other aspects of architecture at Masada. And, and one thing that he was constantly pursuing that he could never find was this magnificent tomb of Herod the Great, which was said to have come as a beautiful tomb with gold and everything else you can imagine perhaps inside. Here you're not just looking at architecture, you're looking at tomb architecture and that of a king. And for the past uh, many decades, it's been his quest to go and find that tomb, as well as to excavate it. The political landscape of Israel has had a turbulent past. With disputed territory and a surrounding volatile climate, the search has been anything but easy. Yet Professor Netzer and his team were greatly rewarded for their diligence. After a lifetime of searching, on May 7, 2007, they hit the archaeological jackpot. At last, the long-lost tomb of Herod the Great was found. A week before, we started to find the pieces of the sarcophagus, so we knew that we are very near to the monument. Once I was informed about the walls, uh, in the right place, it was clear. Both history and the Bible have labeled him Herod the Great. But what was so great about Herod? After all, he executed several of his sons and other close relatives, not to mention his favorite of ten wives. With the rumor circulating that the King of the Jews had been born, the book of Matthew in the New Testament tells us that Herod ordered the killing of all Jewish males under the age of two in the town of Bethlehem. Historians call this horrendous act the Massacre of the Innocents. In his final fit of madness, shortly before his death, Herod decided against two of his sons who were executed in 7 and 4 BCE. He had them both put to death for fear that they were plotting against him. 
causing the Emperor Augustus to joke that it was preferable to be Herod's pig than his son. He even had one son killed just five days before his own demise. Herod committed several acts of unspeakable terror and violence. This is the king history has labeled great. It wasn't his benevolence or his righteous life that earned him the title, but the great architectural legacies he left behind. Herod the Great continually defied nature to accommodate his massive and ambitious building programs. His first and most nature-defying project was the building of the port city, Caesarea. Construction of Caesarea began in 25 BCE and was completed in 13 BCE. Caesarea became the civilian and military capital of Judea and the official residence of the Roman procurators and governors of the time, including the infamous Pontius Pilate, who put Jesus of Nazareth to death. It was built in true Herodian style complete with a theater and a hippodrome used for horse racing and Olympic Games. King uh, Herod started here a port, unlike anything other, in a place even unsuitable for a harbor. Uh, he built a magnificent one, a large one, with moles going hundreds of meters into the sea, uh, so large that it comprised a whole area of two square kilometers. Kurt Rave is a marine archaeologist and has performed extensive research and excavations on the remains of Caesarea. Here he had a long sandy coastline with no hard rock underneath once he left the coast. And uh, so every structure you built, you built on sand. So, which is of course a problem, especially here. This is sand that comes all the way from Egypt. It's like a moving sand. And uh, this coast is also plagued by lots of storms, heavy storms in winter time. It's an open, dangerous coast. So to build an, uh, a harbor like this, just on a grand scale like this, it's a major, major in, uh, engineering feat. And this became, of course, the center of trade and administration of all this region in those days. And became also the port to which he imported all his building uh, material, all the granite and marble uh, pillars and stones and slabs that he created this beautiful marble, glistering <laughs> marble uh, city in the sunlight here called Caesarea. It was so magic that it took my colleague Afner Urban, the late Afner Urban, uh, from our Archive University, uh, more than 25 seasons of expeditions just to figure out how they did it. I mean, if you make an underwater construction of these enormous moles underwater, already with a kind of concrete that hardens underwater, from Pozzoli, from volcanic ashes from Italy. I mean, you talk about a major engineering feat, uh, especially when it's underwater and great depth, that uh, is even in these days not an easy thing to do. Herod's ability to build in difficult places still amazes both archaeologists and architects today. His structures and designs are still around more than 2,000 years later most of which were destroyed by earthquakes or wars. We always talk about Herod the Builder, who was able to create his dreams. Okay? Of course, it's a very complex person. He's also Herod the Murderer. But... Another structure that contributed to Herod's reputed greatness is the impressive desert fortress known as Masada. Herod built this palace on top of an isolated rock plateau lying on the eastern edge of the Judean desert, overlooking the Dead Sea. According to Josephus, the first century historian, Herod the Great fortified Masada between 37 and 31 BCE as a refuge for himself in the event of a revolt. No doubt that Masada, the construction of Masada, is very defensive. Imagine a mountain which from all sides has got those cliffs. It is very unusual. Usually it will be from three sides, two sides, but four sides is very unusual. Masada is almost completely flat on top. However, at the northern extreme end of the fortress, Herod once again defied nature. He built his private palace into the natural formation on the side of the cliff. 
one could stand on top of the plateau facing north and be completely unaware of the entire palace built below. In 70 AD, at the beginning of the first Jewish revolt against the Roman Empire, a group of Jewish extremist rebels called the Sicarii took Masada from the Romans who were stationed there. In 73 AD, the zealots at Masada discovered their refuge was about to be recaptured by the Romans. Rather than accepting defeat and being taken as slaves, the members of the group killed their families and then turned their swords on themselves. They chose to die as free men. Finally, the Herodian, the place that would house Herod's tomb for all time. But why of all his architectural triumphs did he choose the Herodian to bear his name? And why would he choose this desert location to be his final resting place? Herod's buildings were marvels of the ancient world. Today, Israel's landscape is shaped by several of them. But one odd-shaped structure in the middle of nowhere seems to have been a special one for the king, the Herodian. Built originally as a place of refuge for Herod and his family, it would eventually become the site of his burial tomb. He was seen as a really uh, a tyrant. And so the Herodian was a place where he could quickly escape to from Jerusalem. Located just seven miles south of Jerusalem on the Judean desert, the Herodian stands to this day as a monument to King Herod. On the outside, it looks like a hollowed out volcano. One can only imagine the amount of labor it took to carve out and create yet another palatial residence. Although it became the burial site for Herod, it lay abandoned for many years after his death. After decades of desolation, the Herodian would find itself with new occupants, the members of the Barcoba Revolt. The Romans who controlled Israel were a brutal occupying force. The Jews were forbidden to carry out the practices that made them a unique people. Hadrian, the ruling emperor, attempted to root out Judaism which he saw as the cause of continuous rebellions. He prohibited the Torah law, the Hebrew calendar, and executed Judaic scholars. In 132 AD, a revolt led by Barcoba quickly spread across the country, cutting off the Roman garrison in Jerusalem. The struggle lasted for three years before the revolt was brutally crushed. History records that over 580,000 Jews were killed, and 50 fortified towns and 985 villages were utterly destroyed. The Herodian became a refuge for the members of the revolt. Here they carved out tunnels and secret passageways. The unearthed team is given a rare personal tour by Professor Ehud Netzer, the archaeologist who has systematically excavated the Herodian fortress and eventually discovered the tomb of King Herod the Great. He shows us how the members of the revolt used the Herodian as a base of operations to fight against the Romans. One of the things that intrigued me, of course, is the beauty of these, of these tunnels. Yes. Now, you had mentioned they were used by the people for the Barcoba revolt. Exactly. Were they built by him and his people, or were they already from Herod's time and then they just used them? No, no, no. In Herod's time, there's only the cisterns. Only the cisterns, and, okay. And what is interesting, that these people who built the tunnels, they were, they were not interested in the cisterns as cisterns, but they wanted to avoid the Romans to know that they built tunnels in the hills. When the Bargoba people sat there, they used the cisterns for all kinds of uses, not only to, to live in, but maybe to throw dirt into them, maybe to reuse them for any other things. This is the biggest uh, cistern in Herodium. It's not as big as the one that Masada and maybe some other sites, but it's here is the biggest. And uh, we found it uh, uh, full with dirt, uh, I mean, quite full. We decided to clear this one to the bottom, that at least in part of the genuine Herodian system, we see the staircase to go down. So even if there is just little water left, still you can get it. And what is very nice here is the lines of the water. You can see sure. that water was standing here. That's right, the, the different fill levels of the water. Yes. 
This is a wonderful uh, uh, greetings from the past. <laughs> you, you can feel the water standing. Now we're going through this tunnel and this is going to take us to a different area of the palace. To the top of the palace, to the main building on the top of the hill. We're walking through the tunnels, but this is actually, this is coming up right through the center of the Herodian, Professor? Yes, it will bring us to the top. The idea here was to pick water from the cisterns, not going outside. So through the hill to take uh, probably uh, uh, skins full of water up, up to the top from the cisterns. That makes a lot of sense. I think so. <laughs> From the brutal crushing of the revolt in the summer of 135 AD until May 7, 2007, the Herodian slipped out of the limelight and was considered another relic of Jewish history. All that changed with an amazing claim. The tomb of King Herod the Great had been found. With no inscriptions or documents found at the site, is there any clear evidence? Has the tomb of Herod the Great really been found? The Herodian is a prominent structure in the midst of mostly flat desert surroundings. Here in this desert palace, King Herod decided to be buried and remembered with an ornate tomb and mausoleum. There has been much speculation about the cause of Herod's demise. There were a lot of enemies. He had a lot of enemies. They continued throughout his life because he kept doing things that created enemies. He killed people. He extorted people. Uh, that, and it's through that that he's able to, to build these big buildings, beautiful buildings and a beautiful tomb even at a place like the Herodian. He didn't get this just by being a good businessman. Herod, who lived a life full of paranoia, died it would seem of natural causes. He had these festering pustules on his body and he was suffering so horribly and they didn't, the, Physicians didn't know what to do. He went to the hot springs at Kali Roy with the hope that the, the healing uh, mixture of, of salts and, and water and heat would be able to heal him. He wasn't healed. The word went out to all of Judea and Judea rejoiced because they thought the word was that Herod died. When Herod heard that these people rejoiced at his death, he was irate. He was livid and he had all the males of the aristocracy herded into the arena at Jericho and they were locked up there and while he was waiting for those last moments, those last days, those last hours before he would die at his winter palace in Jericho, at the moment of his death he gave orders that all of those people in the arena would be killed at once. He killed many to protect his own life, fearing that someone close to him would either poison or betray him. But in the end, despite all of his wealth and power, he could not protect himself from the inevitable, death. His drive to impress his superiors in Rome propelled him to achieve greatness, often at the expense of others. He may have had friends in Rome, but friends were few and far between in Judea. He was despised by many Jews, especially the Zealots. They saw his attempts to rule the sovereign Jewish nation as blasphemy and an abomination. They fought and sought to kill him while he was alive. It's no surprise that after his death, they would seek to destroy anything that was erected to honor or remember him. Here, first of all, it's a mausoleum, which is a different way of, of burial, and mostly was used by rich people and by kings and so on. So the, uh, the sarcophagus stood in a building that disappeared and we, and we have quite a good idea how it disappeared. But anyhow, we have evidence, especially by the architectural elements, uh, which are not part of the podium, the, the foundation. So the tomb is gone, but okay. the evidence is here and clear.
Somebody hated Herod so much that they wouldn't even leave one piece unbroken of his sarcophagus or of his tomb. One of the factors that hindered the search for the tomb was the expectation of what archaeologists would find. There were visions of grandeur for sure, treasures and a beautifully decorated sarcophagus, his stone coffin. What many failed to consider was that the tomb would be vandalized and, in this case, utterly destroyed. Professor Netzer recounts the moment the tomb was found. I was uh, in my car, my wife was driving, and uh, uh, Roy, the only staff member, was at that day at the field, and suddenly I get a phone call from him telling me that we did reach the uh, solid walls, and uh, that was clear to him and immediately clear to myself that we uh, really reached the monument itself. That was when I sort of raised my hand in the car. King Herod's deep desire was to make a difference in his world and to be remembered for all time. His barbaric acts of violence perpetuated against so many, including members of his own family, and his many spectacular architectural wonders have ensured Herod a place in the eternal spotlight. The Herodian and Herod's tomb are fascinating remnants of Jewish history that have been unearthed in Israel's ancient soil.